Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Africa's Tenerife Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. On today's show it's very short because I'm using the free version of Buzzsprout. I'm still evaluating it and I've only got 14 minutes left to upload this month. It actually changes tomorrow, so if I missed Sunday and recorded tomorrow, I could upload a full episode. But I also didn't interview anybody this week, so it's okay. And also, Christina didn't do the, her SSDD this week. So in fact, the uh, podcast today is going to be quite short. I will do the aftcast of the weather, and I will do the COVID-19 update, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. But apart from that, uh, let's carry straight on with the weather. Well, the whole week has been very, very similar, actually. It's been quite warm and hazy. We haven't seen Lagomera at all. And uh, in the night, it's been quite warm. It hasn't dropped below 24 degrees. And then yesterday and today got really warm. Uh, it wasn't as warm as they were expecting, so in the 40s and stuff. But it's, it certainly was up in the 30s in the shade. And uh, sweating cobs, actually. You probably see that on my shirt. There you go. So that was... Uh, the weather's been very, very similar all day. So we ate every meal outside breakfast well a brunch and dinner we only have two meals a day because we don't move a lot as you can probably tell and uh, if you're looking back from last year you'll find out what this week was like mid to late upper 20s not below 24 in the night and hitting 30 in the shade at the weekend COVID-19 update. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got some bad news today. The actual active cases on Tenerife went up by not a lot, but it did actually go up. Um, most of the um, cases were in the north, but it went to 20 active cases. So today's Sunday, the 19th of July, and we have 20 active cases as of today. Um, I think there was four extra on Wednesday, on the 13th, I think it was, and on the 16th, another four. So it was obviously two banks. Now, we are getting more tourists in the island, and uh, unfortunately, quite a few of them are not social distancing. They're pretending that nothing's happened, and they're going down to Veronica's and dancing the night away. Uh, not wearing masks, uh, hugging, kissing, and unfortunately, in 14 days, we'll probably see the results of that. We're just hoping that they uh, kept themselves to themselves 14 days before they arrived and haven't brought it to the island. And then obviously dancing and jumping around is no problem. But unfortunately, we can't guarantee that. And uh, so therefore, in the next two weeks, we're expecting to see if that had any effect whatsoever on the, uh, on the active cases on the island. Now, of course, if they don't infect locals and go home, after a week, then probably we're not going to see that. But you might see that in the host country or in the country where they live. And uh, we won't get to see that, so we can't really measure it. The Cabildo did um, meet last Thursday, and a lot of the autonomous regions in Spain did end up changing the law to make masks compulsory as soon as you leave the house. Uh, we didn't. So in the Canary Islands, the law did not change. But what they did say was that they would strengthen uh, the controls. So you are meant to carry a mask at all times, so please do. You are meant to wear the mask when you are entering and leaving establishments. So before you go into a restaurant or bar, you have to put your mask on when you come off the street and walk into the bar with the mask. When you sit at your table, you may take the mask off unless you cannot guarantee a more than one meter distance between somebody you don't know. Obviously, that doesn't uh, count with a waiter and waitress because uh, I don't know why, but basically they will serve you um, with a mask on, but you don't have to wear your mask while you're ordering. Something like that, anyway. So if you do have to get up for any reason, you have to place your mask on first before you leave the table. And that is the rules. Obviously, not everybody is following those rules exactly. And to tell you the truth, 
I haven't. So I've walked in a bar without a mask because I'm meeting friends and I've not thought anything about it. But they did strengthen it uh, last Thursday, so you are going to get police controlling that. And if they want to go by the letter of the law and see a bar which has people sat at the bar without masks less than five feet apart or um, people walking in and out of the bar or standing around without masks uh, unless they're at a standing table obviously but just walking around without masks they may go in and uh, have a chat with the owner and in worst case scenario it could lead to fines for the owner and the patrons so do be careful if you are coming over as i always say make sure that 14 days before you travel you don't put yourself in a high risk situation and that will be great So uh, because I don't have an interview today and we don't have SSDD and I've only got 14 minutes to talk, I decided to talk about something about myself. And uh, I got a comment actually uh, on YouTube about uh, did I, have I ever been to America and um, when was the last time I was there? And I was explaining that I was there in, two, in 1991, I think it was, um, on holiday in 1992. No, 1990, 1990, I was on there on holiday. And in 1992, I was there with the company I was working for. And we were there in April and September, each time for two weeks, uh, working on a project with some local people in the States. One time it was the East Coast, uh, up in Boston, I think it was. And then the next time it was in California, in Silicon Valley. And um, for some reason, they didn't see that I'd left the country in April. So the next time I arrived, they said you arrived in April 1991 and you didn't leave till the end of September 1991. And I said, well, that's not true. I left in April and came back in September. You see me coming in uh, at the back end of September. And they said, no, we don't check you coming in. We only check you leaving. I said, well, okay. So what are you going to do? And they said, well, you overstayed, so we're going to send you home. So they were going to turn me around and put me on a plane back. And... Um, Eventually, I said, well, there's nobody I can call because they're all in bed. Um, but I actually got married in June 1991. And I took my wedding ring off and showed them. And um, they sort of ummed and ahed and went, yeah, OK, but, uh, you know, we don't have that in the system. I said, well, you can put it in the system now. No, we can't. They said, we can't change the data. I said, well, if the data's wrong, you can change it. And they said, no, you're telling me to do my job, sir. And I said, no, I'm definitely not telling you how to do your job. So anyway, they let me in to the country, and uh, that was all well and good. But every time I entered the country, they sent me to secondary now and asked me the same questions every time. Why did I overstay and what was I doing here? And I was just flagged as a problem. And probably, to tell you the truth, I was a problem. But... Uh, so when I actually went there to live for five years, I had to jump through hoops to get a visa. Eventually the company did it for me and they got me a visa and that was fine. Stamped it in my passport and off I went. Unfortunately, my passport ran out um, whilst I was in the States. So I said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll send off for a new one. So I sent off for a new passport and they did it and sent it all back. And the company did it for me. So it was actually uh, sent from Frankfurt, Frank frankfurt passport office i believe and uh, i got my british passport back and then the americans said just a minute there's no visa in this passport and i said oh well it was in my old passport and they said well you need to get a new visa i said oh, that's not a problem i said and they said no it isn't but you have to get the visa at the same place you got the last visa and you have to get it tomorrow so <laughs> i had to get on a plane there and then and fly to frankfurt germany from Richmond, Virginia. And I got in in the morning because it was an overnight flight and I got a taxi to the American embassy there and I was walking in and they said, oh, you can't bring your mobile phone in, sir. I said, what? I said, well, what am I going to do? It's not our problem, they said. No mobile phones are out. 
So I went outside and there was a little kiosk selling hot dogs and oh, sort of curry bushed and newspapers and stuff. And he had a sign outside that said, I will look after your mobile phone for five, whatever it was at the time. I, th I think we were still on D marks, so it was 10 D marks or something. So anyway, I went there and gave him a mobile phone and paid him the money and went in and did the, did the visa. Came out, got my mobile phone and uh, went back to the airport, got on a plane. I went back to Richmond, Virginia. So then when my contract finished in America and went back to Germany, I couldn't actually uh, visit America ever again because they won't let me in on the visa waiver program and to go on holiday there, it's too much trouble to go and apply for a visa to get in. So uh, also we don't travel at all anymore now, apart from between here and maybe Germany once every couple of years. Uh, because Christina just doesn't like traveling anymore. And so we're here for life, hopefully. And, uh, yeah. So that was the story of me, my visa in America. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and I do want to say thank you to all our sponsors. We did get more sponsors again, and especially to Tony. I mean, I really want to say to Tony, thank you very, very much, because you have sponsored us more than once, and uh, it's really, really appreciated, and I hope when you come over that we're going to uh, find time to sit down and have a chat. So anybody else who wants to sponsor us, then you can go to www.timothydowd.com and you can hit the sponsor button. Uh, read everything first, because I mean, we put that there for you to, to look at. Uh, you also get access to the podcast as a podcast, so you can listen to it, unless you're watching this on uh, YouTube. A lot of people do watch it on YouTube, but you can actually download it as a podcast to your mobile device and listen to it while you're doing something else. And... Um, yeah, press the sponsor button and put in any amount you like. I mean, it's one dollar to a million. It's up to you. And we really do appreciate every help you can get. And it all goes on equipment and petrol and um, for the music and the royalties. And so we, we spend it all. And Christina, if there's any money left over, we buy her audiobooks. So on audible.de, she listens to German and English audiobooks from there. Uh, we're not affiliated with them. But I really do recommend it if you go, if you want to audiobooks to go there. And uh, if you like the music, then I get all my music from Epidemic Sound. And I do have a, a link for that, so I'll have a look in the description. And there's an affiliate link if you want to go for uh, any music like that. So this is Tim Dowd for Living With MS in Tenerife, signing off. Goodbye. Zzzz.